I, I've read the opinion as well, and I would say the characterization is a bit different, but he does ultimately, Judge Jones, say no violation of the Voting Rights Act, and you mentioned there are different standards in case law that's evolved through the Supreme Court on that front. Yes. But the direct quote from his ruling says no evidence that a voter couldn't vote, experienced wait times, or was confused about voter registration status. And, it, and I know the issue here for you is voter suppression. So let's look at the numbers in Georgia. The last gubernatorial primary versus now, there's a net increase of 763,380 voters. That sounds like the opposite of voter suppression. Voter suppression is not about turnout. It's about the barriers and obstacles to access. And that's one of the other conflations that I think is very important that we distinguish. Voter suppression exists when there's difficulty registering, staying on the rolls, being able to cast a ballot and having that ballot, ballot counted. And in the state of Georgia, we adequately proved and more and more voters have experienced difficulties with doing so. In 2018, Brian Kemp, by according to federal law, he violated the rights of 53,000 Georgians. There was a federal court that two years before it found him in violation with 30, more than 30,000 voters, holding those registrations hostage. And what happened in the intervening years from 2019 to 2022, because of our lawsuit, we got 22,000 voters restored to the rolls. We got 2,000 naturalized citizens put out, we got them restored and actually got them the ability to vote in the state of Georgia. We were able to challenge a number of issues and we saw legislative changes made in response to our lawsuit. Voter suppression is not about how many people try to vote. It's about whether or not there are obstacles to and barriers to voting that are created by the very state that should be guaranteeing their access. And so, yes, I am always going to be concerned about access to the right to vote, especially when we have a governor who signed a bill that makes it even more difficult. We are hearing stories about disabled people who are having a difficult time navigating the new absentee ballot requirements. Senior citizens who for 15 years received their absentee ballots automatically but are no longer able to receive them. We know that these are barriers to voting, and in the United States of America, in the state of Georgia, barriers to voting should never be considered a native good. We should always be trying to expand access for eligible citizens, and that's the fight that I will continue to fight. Okay.